That afternoon, in the middle of the calm desert in Niran, two CIA agents, Tom Harris and Oliver Alterman, were on an undercover mission. They were disguised as technicians who were going to install internet and telephone networks at the suspected site of Iran's nuclear facility. A group of soldiers is closely watching them. From inside the hole, Tom asks Oliver to get him a cutting tool. His aim is to distract the soldiers who are watching him so that he can install a device to sabotage the network. Oliver tried to buy time while he fetched the cutting tool, and eventually Tom succeeded in setting up the devices. The connections from their headquarters in Langley, Virginia, were successfully infiltrated, and they were able to access the entire structure of the internet network, cameras, and satellite imagery. As they suspected, there was a nuclear facility hidden underground. After he finished his work, Tom climbed back up and unexpectedly, one of the soldiers on watch suspected him. He wanted to know what Tom had been working on. Tom pretended not to understand what the soldier was saying, and Oliver tried to explain that they had just fixed the internet network. The soldier threatened to call in the notorious Quds troops if Tom didn't talk to him. Oliver kept trying to convince him that they were hired by the Ayatollah, their government. As Tom was about to take his cell phone from his pants pocket, spontaneously, all the soldiers pointed their guns at both Tom and Oliver. Tom then showed them a live soccer broadcast to prove that they now had a very fast internet network. In the end, they all believed them. On the way home, Tom informed his headquarters that drones and UAVs were on standby. From their headquarters, they hacked into the system at the nuclear facility and planned to destroy the area. If their plan goes smoothly, then within 10 hours, the nuclear facility will explode. Next, we meet a journalist named Luna Kujai, who is doing research on a company called Siblixt. As she was reporting the news, her cell phone rang. The call was from James, her friend who works at the Pentagon. James leaked a secret CIA mission file and sent it to Luna. Luna then reported the information she received to the head of a newspaper company called Hans. They planned to make it a headline. Luna and Hans' conversation was apparently intercepted by Colonel Fazard, an Iranian agent. It is from Luna and Hans' call that the movie's main story begins. Upon arriving at the safe house before leaving Iran, Tom called Corinne, his wife. Corinne asked him not to delay his return any longer, as Tom had to attend his daughter's graduation ceremony and sign the divorce papers for her. It was revealed that Corn had already found a new partner, who turned out to be a woman as well. Meanwhile, at Herat International Airport in Afghanistan, a man named Mohammad looked nervous as he underwent screening before entering the country. After successfully passing the check, Mohammad was picked up by a car. On his way, he was then called by someone named Roman, a CIA agent. Roman is the person who will help him enter Afghanistan and employ him as an interpreter. The CIA began its sabotage to blow up the nuclear facility in Iran, and the mission was successful. They were finally able to destroy the facility. Tom, who also saw the explosion, was relieved after realizing his mission had succeeded, and that meant he had to get out of the country as quickly as possible. An Iranian general inspected the explosion from helicopter. He thought the whole sabotage was the work of either the Americans or the Russians, as he thought only those two countries had the capability to do so. Colonel Fazard then told him that he was currently watching a journalist who had received the entire CIA operations file in the Middle East. Upon arrival at Dubai Airport, Tom got a message from Roman informing him that his flight was delayed for a few hours. We returned to Luna, who was getting ready to go back to Berlin. Out of the blue, a group of unidentified people comes up to her. They then arrest her and take her somewhere. Those people were troops sent by Colonel Fazard. He arrested her because he thought she knew about the CIA's secret operations in the country. Tom and Roman to discuss the job that Roman had offered him. Roman was willing to pay Tom whatever he wanted if he could get the mission assigned to him done within three days. However, Tom turned it down, saying he was only willing to carry out the mission once he returned from America. As it turned out, Tom's cell phone had been tapped by Roman, so he knew all about Tom's personal matters. Roman continued to persuade Tom because he knew Tom needed money for his daughter's school fees, and in the end, Tom accepted the mission. For this mission, Tom will destroy all of Iran's nuclear program facilities, located on Iran's secret airstrip across the border in Afghanistan. To carry out his mission, Tom will be assisted by Mohammed as his interpreter. That night, they successfully entered Afghanistan. Not only had he kidnapped Luna, Colonel Fazard had also kidnapped Luna's daughter. Fazard asked for the documents she received from James, and he also asked her for information about Siblixt, 
the company she was researching. Tom and Mohammed arrived at the safe house. Mohammed asked Tom what exactly Tom's mission was, however, Tom did not answer the question. Roman also did not tell Mohammed about the mission he was going to carry out with Tom, as he only ordered him to pick him up and be Tom's interpreter. Later that evening, Mohammed secretly went out to meet a woman. From this meeting, we learn that Mohammed is one of the descendants of the Taliban group. Mohammed accepted the job from Roman because he was also looking for his missing sister-in-law in Hira. The next day, the secret file of documents leaked by Luna is released to the media, exposing Tom and Oliver's identities. Roman quickly informed Tom that his mission and identity in Iran had been exposed. As for Oliver, he had been found and killed by Iranian agents. Roman then cancelled his mission and rushed Tom out of Afghanistan. With the CIA's operations file spreading, Tom became the target of the Taliban army, Iranian agents, Pakistani intelligence, ISIS, and Al-Qaeda. If Tom was caught by any of them, he would be sold to the highest bidder. Roman then organizes a plan to rescue Tom and Mohammed so that they can get out of Afghanistan as soon as possible. He will be assisted by Christ, the head of the CIA's Special Operations Unit. Roman explained to his bosses that Tom would have to travel 400 miles from where he was to Kandavar. According to Roman, it is not the distance that is the problem. The real problem is that along his journey, Tom will be hunted by several groups who are after him. Tom quickly disposed of all his files and evidence, and he then asked Mohammed to leave immediately. Meanwhile, a man named Nasir contacted Rasul and asked him to hire Taliban troops to chase Tom and Mohammed. Tom and Mohammed begin their escape, and before he knows it, Iranian agents are following them. Tom goes inside the market to change his car, but unfortunately, the Iranian agents know about it. After driving for a while, Tom's car was stuck in traffic. Coming up behind them are Colonel Fazard and his troops. On the other side, Nasir, who turned out to be an intelligence agent from Pakistan, also began to get closer to them. Tom accidentally hit the car in front of him. The owner of the car became angry, attracting the attention of the people and agents who were chasing him. Realizing that there were people following him, Tom immediately sped up when he saw one of the Iranian agents coming his way. Nasir rushed after him, only to crash into a car. He then blew up a car to block the Iranian agents. Tom chose a way around to trick the agents who were chasing him, but he was ambushed by another car. With no other choice, Tom crashed into it and drove away. Tom and Mohammed's journey was again delayed when their tire burst. Mohammed, looking frightened, had intended to leave Tom, but he came back when he heard Tom open fire on someone who turned out to be a kid. Tom then asked Mohammed to tell the boy to get out and drop the object he was holding. Tom picked up the thing the boy had dropped, which turned out to be a remote to detonate a mine embedded in the road in front of their car. Tom then reached out to Roman to ask Ismail Abrani, the warlord of the Tajik group, for help. They were going to borrow a helicopter to get out of the country. Meanwhile, Nasir, who was still chasing them, was told by the little boy who was holding the remote mine earlier where Tom was going. Tom and Mohammed passed through the desert until they reached the main road. Later that night, throughout their journey, they did not turn on the car's lights to avoid being seen by the enemies. Tom only used night vision to see the road. Shortly after, Colonel Fazard's helicopter approached them and fired at their car until it finally left the main road because their view was disturbed due to the bullets hitting it. As they were continuously fired at, their car finally broke down. They had to continue their journey on foot while the helicopter kept firing at the two of them. Some people got off the helicopter and chased them. Thankfully, Tom managed to disable them. He then made Mohammed a bait for the helicopter to spot him. When the helicopter started approaching and was about to shoot Mohammed, Tom threw a grenade at it. From the CIA headquarters, Chris couldn't monitor Tom as he lost track of them. Meanwhile, Roman has yet to give his latest news. On the other hand, Roman has enlisted the help of his friends, the Afghan Special Forces, to help Tom. After Tom and Mohammed managed to take out the Iranian agents, they decided to take a break in a safe place. Tom lent Mohammed his jacket for him to pray, and he also gave some of his food to Mohammed to break his fast. They then shared stories about their respective families. The next day, Nasser was seen arriving at the crash site. Tom and Mohammed were later picked up by Ismail's men. Mohammed was surprised to learn that the person Tom had asked for help was Ismail Rabbani, the Tajik warlord. They were then taken by that group to their headquarters. Upon arrival, Ismail told them that his helicopter had been borrowed by the Taliban and that he could only lend them his truck. They were then invited to eat together by Ismail. 
To everyone's surprise, Muhammad said that Ismail was a traitor. He also said that Ismail was the one who had destroyed Herod, his birthplace. He had also killed thousands of children and women, including Muhammad's son. Ismail then gave his gun to Muhammad and told him to shoot him if Muhammad wanted to take revenge on him. However, Muhammad, who had the gun in his hand, decided not to shoot him. Muhammad then left them with a deep feeling of disappointment in Tom because he had become friends with the person who had killed his son. Tom, who did not know about it, then apologized to Muhammad. He said he would refuse Ismail's help if that's what Muhammad wanted. But in the end, Muhammad was willing to take Ismail's truck and continue their journey. Indeed, Ismail betrayed them. He called up the Pakistanis and told them Tom's destination. Nasir, who received information from his boss, then informed Rasul, one of the leaders of the Taliban group, to arrest Tom and Muhammad. On the other hand, Tom and Muhammad, who had not realized that they had been framed by Ismail, were ambushed by Taliban forces. They were arrested and then taken to the Taliban headquarters. While Muhammad was being tortured by Rasul, ISLS forces came to attack. Rasul then contacted Nasir and asked for air support because ISLS forces used heavy weaponry. But Nasir refused and instead ordered Rasul to wait for him to arrive. Rasul and his team got wiped out by the ISLS troops. One of the ISLS members entered the room where Tom was being held. As it turned out, it was Roman and the Afghan special forces disguised as ISIS. Roman quickly freed Tom, and then they looked for Muhammad, who was being held in another room. When they found Muhammad, they quickly rescued him and brought him out. Meanwhile, Nasir, who had just arrived, realized that it was not ISIS who attacked Rasul and his troops, but Afghan special forces. He managed to see Roman and Tom when they were leaving. He then contacted Taliban forces and other units to catch up with them. Tom and Roman realized they were being followed. Another firefight ensued and unfortunately, Roman was hit. He then purposefully threw himself down to block Nasser's car. But his efforts were in vain, he had to be shot dead by Nasser. He then chased Tom on his motorcycle, and he ordered a team of mortars to fire at Tom and Muhammad's car. A few moments later, several groups from all over arrived, while Tom was almost at the border gate. Mortar fire continued to rain down on Tom and Muhammad until finally one of the shots managed to hit Tom's car. Nasser ran fast towards Tom. The firefight between the two of them was very fierce. He was finally taken down by Tom, despite the fact that he was also shot in the gut. Taliban troops from all directions began to come closer, and both Tom and Mohammed couldn't help but surrender. At the CIA headquarters, Christ ordered an airplane pilot to carry out a bombing to clear the way for Tom and Mohammed. Christ realized that his order violated his authority. But he didn't care, even if he had to be fired. He doesn't want any more of his people to die. Tom and Mohammed, who seemed to have given up because the Taliban troops were getting closer, suddenly saw an airplane raining bombs on the Taliban troops. They then continued their journey in the car they managed to find and broke through the gate. Tom and Mohammed finally managed to reach the plane. The movie ends by showing Colonel Fazard, who has been killed while Luna is finally released and returns to her country. Likewise with Tom, he was able to meet his daughter, and Mohammed has also returned to his home, reunited with his family.